I really like the topics. But I really, really wish that he would edit out the drinking noises. It is so unprofessional. This is the fucking Abracast, dude. And I am proud to announce that it's getting a little bit bigger. That's right. <laughs> Starting March 3rd, we are launching a limited series called the American Sermon. It's the occult foundation of the United States where we are going to be looking at some of this uh, weird, offbeat, and sinister bullshit tied to the creation of the United States. I, Bros, I am so excited for this. I've been working on it for um for like a month and a half so far officially starting March 3rd, there will probably be, well, there's probably going to be a, a cool, uh, early episode just so I can get the RSS feed and stuff lined up and straighten out. So, you know, you can take a, keep your eye out for it on the abracast.com as always uh, Spreaker. It'll be on Spreaker and then we will officially roll it out as fast as we can after that. But, uh, yeah, keep your eye out for it. In the dark shadows and in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tombs. The order of the Abracast, we are the brave and bold. <clears throat> to go deep, you must reject... <clears throat> To go deep, you must reject each phenomenon, each illumination, each ecstasy going ever downward until you reach the last avatars of the symbols that are the racial archetypes. In this sacrifice to the abysmal gods and the apotheosis that transmute Tates them to the beauty and the power that is your eternity and the redemption of mankind. Neurosis and the initiation are the same thing, except that neurosis stops short of apotheosis and the tremendous force that mold all life or insisted short circuited circuited <laughs> i don't know and turned poisonous psychoanalyst tr transform tile false ego symbols exteriorizes them into false social symbols and it is a confusion of conformity oh wow that's brilliant a confusion of conformity look at around look around you bros look around you on facebook look at these sjw's and so forth and tell me it's not a confusion of conformity back to the book and cure in terms of group behaviors again look at that that fits the SJW, the modern church lady of the SJW um, conformity and the cure in terms of group behaviors. Back to the book. But in initiation must go on until the barrier is passed, until the misty bastions of Ifintel Trophanels change into the rocks and crags of eternity, the garden of Kilgsignor, into the city of God. This is from our old buddy, Jack Parsons, the head of California Lodge of the Ordo Templi Orientis. The Abercast, occult, history, conspiracy, and violence. Hey!
Welcome to the Abercast. I am your homunculus tonight. <laughs> I'm John Towers. This is the Abercast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, a lot of the um, the majority of this episode is coming from the feature book is The Magical Revival from Kenneth Grant, um, particularly Chapter 2. So we're going to get right into it. We got a ton of stuff. We got a ton of stuff. We're going to get, so we're driving right into it. Before we go, I would like to invite you all to get the nearest glass, jar, pitcher, blessed, sacred vessel of the art that is in your area and go ahead and apply the formula to it. The formula for the weapon of mass distraction. I want you to go ahead and make a jihad, a gin jihad with me so we can, we're drink. We're just hanging out. We're drinking trading stories, fools. And this is it. Cheers to you. All right, we're jumping right in. The conscious current, the consciousness current is twofold, the magical and the mystical. The former operates in the lower chakras and later in the higher. All right, so we really, I've been steering away from this Eastern chakra business, even though it's come up a lot, um, especially in the Kabbalistic episodes and all this stuff. So you have these seven power, like these seven centers of energy, uh, associated with your actual physical body, um, from the top, the very top of your head to like your butthole like though that's the way it goes that's all you're gonna get from me i mean sometime down the line we might shift into like easternism i actually want to do the bhagavad gita i own a copy of the bhagavad gita and there, there's some crazy fucking shit in there so we we might actually get into that <clears throat> but i'm just gonna pass it over for right now right right now what you need to know is that there's a seven power points from the top of your head to your butthole <laughs> the later and the higher that which ejaculates as semen oh yeah we're talking about sex magic again this is a sex magic episode we're continuing off of the last one that which ejaculates as semen is un absorbed energy prana or ojas is always contributes to the creation of material forms whether lodged in a womb or not if not the overflow as in masturbation sodomy fellatio etc I don't know. <laughs> I'm sad that they look at these. Things. These are my favorite things. <laughs> they're, they're really casting shade on it. Anyhow, is taken up by the astral, if not the quipothic entities and built into the organisms already existing on the subtle planes of, uh, Para, oh boy, fuck, Greek. Paracelius refers to the homunculi. All right, here we go. We're going to get into it. What's a homunculi? <clears throat> I don't know. Are you worried about it? I mean, is this what's going on in your life right now? You need to worry about what a homunculi is? Here we go. Artificially generated creature made from the sperm independent of the female or organism uh, and the astral larvae 
the parasitic monster built out of the substance of the voluptuous imaginings. All right, so I have this whole bit about about, about homunculi. <clears throat> this homunculi thing is weird. Um, and what is what's even weirder about it is that we are in like this golden age of homunculus right now. <laughs> I don't know how many, I'll just say like, uh, dozens of YouTube videos there of people claiming to make homunculi and they don't understand it at all. Like they don't get it. Like it's not what the, it's not what it is, but, um, they're doing videos about how to make homunculuses and they're like talking about making homunculi and there's also videos about debunking the videos that are making homunculi, etc. Anyhow, these homunculuses or homunculi are, it's an, it's an alchemical thing. It started in the Middle Ages, probably the Dark Ages. It started in like the 1400s. And, um, they're little, basically little humans. They're like these little humans or crude humans. They're like these little beings that are artificially created by this, some kind of secret alchemical process. Usually it is like this dude just coming on stuff. Like he'll just come on stuff. Um, uh, he'll come on, uh, he'll come inside like a cow or he'll come on like a sealed up, like a, I don't know, like, a, I don't know what it is. It's like a bag of, uh, manure. Like he'll just come on like a bag of manure and then like, he'll seal it up and like, he'll come back a few days later and there'll be like a little human in there. It sounds weird. It's weird. It's a whole fucking weird thing, bro. <clears throat> All sorts of these wild ideas. There's like, there's an, this I, medieval idea that like, there's these little tiny microscopic versions of human beings, like in sperms. I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's whole, it's hilarious. Oh, hold on. I have a, oh. I have an article here. All right. The hum, the homunculus. This is uh, uh, from a work called Artificial Men, Alchemy, Transubstantiation, and the Homunculus by Mary Bain Campbell. This is going to get brainy bros. Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> the pre-modern history of the alchemical homunculus goes back a long way. It has been surveyed in several papers by... Should I get into this? William R. Newman, as well as the chapter of his recent book, Promethean Ambitions. The book provides a medieval and early modern history of alchemic alchemy's relationship with the fine arts and the fierce competition between art and nature as preserved in a culture that included science and especially technology in its definition of art. Indeed, alchemy was often what was meant by the phrase, quote, the art unquote in <clears throat> Renaissance, English, French, and Latin known as Aris Divina, the sacred art or more ominously in German, Der Schwartz. <clears throat> Der Schwarzin Kunza. Kunst. I don't know. I don't know German. I can survive in Germany, but I can't have a civilized discussion. 
Du Cougenay's Great Dictionary of Medieval Renaissance Latin Traditions Chima as Ure Confidente Aris Sacre, The Sacred Art of Making Gold, Nostris Alchemae, the LaRousse Dictionary of the Renaissance French gives the first instance of Chimie in France and Fr French, the 1554 meaning alchemy, the allegorical image of a human production of a humunculus, or at least of a, oh my God, <laughs> this is... <laughs> Parthiogenic male stems from the late antiquity. That's important. I should go back and try to fix this. Alchemy, the allegorical image of the human production of a humunculus, or at least of parthiogenetic male males, stems from the late antiquity. <clears throat> and depends in part of the Aristotelian ideas of the superior powers of sperm to the physical contributions of menstrual blood, as well as the so-called Bougania. I always want to say Bologna. I don't Bologna? Bologna? I don't know. Which, I mean, I haven't had Bologna since I was like 12, uh, because it's, it seems gross to me, but okay, whatever. The technical production of bees from a dead cow described vividly in book four of Virgil's Georgius 29 BCE. Newman locates the first technical account of a production of a homunculus. And it's in the, uh, the originally uh, Arabic book of the cow purportedly by Plato. <laughs> well, when's it going to end? It applies to the basic and grotesquely violent techniques of the balonies, uh, to the production of a spontaneous generation of a magically powerful, rational animal that can tell its maker, quote, all things that are absent, unquote. One can also vivisect it and, for instance, quote, use its fluids, unquote, to walk on water. Newman thinks it's very likely that the mm, par, paracleus Read this text. The ninth and 10th century attributed to Jabbar. Considered the creature demonic, but themselves describe another technique by which the adept can make a wholly new species, including, for instance, a girl with the face of a boy or even with luck, quote, a being with prophetic powers, unquote, the apparatus of this non-demonic non -demonic production places the vessel inside a large rotating sphere designed to, quote, stim simulate the effects of the crystalline spheres that rotate about the earth itself. Medieval Latin writers were mostly unimpressed with the alchemists stuck to the empiric work with metals and theolog theologians like William Evering. What? Invaging against the pseudo Plato. Plato. And anything that smacked of the intervention intervention of the incubi and the succubi, which we talked about at the last episode. But 14th century work by Pseudo Thomas uh, uh, argues that the homunculus of the alchemist Zechariah Zachar El Razi 
<laughs> proves experimentally that the female seed does not contribute to generation. This should drive you all crazy. All you snowflakes out there should be driven crazy. And the late 13th century cat. Catalan physician Arnold of Villanova was widely believed to have succeeded in creating homunculus himself. In the 15th century, Alonzo Tostado, who was the inventor of the pizza roll, uh, disapproved of these demonic procedures. Nonetheless, his description of the incarnation makes Jesus himself sa- sound rather like a homunculus, uh, nourished in the sealed vessel of Mary's womb. It remained to Renaissance alchemy to the interest itself in a redeemed version of a man-made homunculus. That's occurred during a phase that Newman describes as one of the increasing allegorizations and decreasing scientific river rigor of the art itself. So these guys were, um, they were obsessed with, um, you know, becoming like gods, you know, like they were, they wanted to like, they're trying to figure out how to make, like I'm one guy, I'm one magician. I'm going to figure out how to make little people that will worship me. It's funny. We talked about this kind of stuff in, uh, um, oh, it was in the Golem episode, the, uh, Jewish wizardry and the go and the Golem episodes, how it was a, they were striving to become like God by making, creating these little, this, these little lives. Right, we're going to get back to the book. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to fit this in. Um, He says, And the secret serpent coiled about to spring. In my coiling there is joy. If I lift up my head, and I and my new it are one. If I droop down my head and shoot forth my venom, it is the rapture of the earth. And I and the earth are one. So we knew this character knew it from the the Lima episodes. And this idea that that Crowley had with um, the yoga and the yoga piranha and all this, um, this stuff. So we're... um, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but here we go. We're going to catch back up with this. The Egyptians concealed the human identity of the gods beneath their animal masks, which represented the types of energy. It was desired to invoke and control the keen sightedness of the hawk, for instance. Uh, I lost my phone. In its ability to mount the heavens and approach the sun caused it to become the solar glyph of such gods as Horus and Ra. The priest assumed the mask or the god form of the hawk in operations involving clairvoyance, discovering hidden treasures and so on. The snake with its swiftness sub, um, subtly uh, and its ability to slow its outworn skin became the type of rejuvenation and change and therefore of magic. So did the moon. In one phase of its symbolism, the moon was originally a glyph of the female, owning its powers of periodic renewal and unifies the dualism of phallic power. Firstly, in its feminine and mutative aspect, the 
lunar energy, this uh, second in its creative aspect, the solar energy typified by the sudden erectility and lightning swift ejaculation of the venom. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Bam. Concept finally became merged with the serpent power, the Kundalini. The earliest state, skipping ahead a little bit, the earliest stages of Crowley's magical career, the involuntary use, or yeah, uh, of sexual magic, plus uh, repeated. Assumptions of the god, forms of ancient Egypt, especially that of the horns, hawk. Uh, it resulted in the report with the Iowas in 1904. We talked about Iowas in the in earlier Thelema episodes. Eleven years later, in 1915, he realized himself as the beast, 666, a magus of the lord of the Aeon of Horus, the crowned and conquering child. <clears throat> the world, the word of which Abrahadabra, which we have mentioned in many episodes, the Thelema episodes, Libras 1, 2, and 3, probably 4. And there are all of, it, it's, it's all over the place. <clears throat> which conceals the formula of Shaihatan and of the sexual magic. Whatever the specific nature of this beast, the hawk, lion, serpent, dragon, phoenix, etc., identification with a non-human entity is implied. Crowley identifies himself with the beast because the number is a mask of Hadit. Hadit, which we've mentioned before, we've done in the, the in the Thelema thread, we've done we've talked specifically about Hadit, or Set Shaihaten, Rapper, scented celestial by the dog star, and on Earth by the phallus. Here we go. Here's to the phallus. The number of the sun is six, symbolized by the seal of Solomon. The number of the star of Set is six. And the universal hexagram. Do you guys know what the universal hexa the universal hexagram is? It's cursive. This is <clears throat> this is why like you know how you're not you know how your kids aren't taught cursive anymore the idea of cursive is that you don't you can can tr do your letters you can write without lifting your pen from the paper the unicursal hexagram is you can build a hexagram you can build a pen a pentagram without lifting your um pen from the paper uh, it's an important way to build a sigil. Oh, you sigil guys out there. I've never heard another, I never heard a sigil dude talk about being unicursal. Maybe you should think about that. Anyhow, I feel like I'm falling apart. want to officially announce this uh, we have a limited series coming up called uh, Abracast the American Sermon um, it's the it's a look at the occult foundation of the United States we're going to be looking at all of the weird sort of offbeat and sinister stuff tied into the creation of the 
uh, United States. And we're pretty excited about this. It's officially starting March 3rd. <clears throat> There will probably be at least one early episode if you want to keep your eye, if you want to get a sneak peek of it, uh, just so I can get the RSS feed and stuff straightened out. So, you know, you can look for it at abercast.com. You can definitely look for it at Spreaker, and then we'll roll it out on other platforms just as fast as we can. Thank you, guys. I'm really excited about this. I hope you will join me. was i talking about the hexagram of the beast <laughs> the number of the sun the child which is six vo we know this and the six 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 similarly the scarlet woman the babylon the home of the phallus represented astronomically by new what knew it draco and her stars is upon the earth of Vizica or Caetes. Her number seven, which is the number of Venus. Venus. Her planetary representative. Originally, however, the number seven derived from her identity as the seven stars of the great bear. Or the dragon of space, whose name was Fek. Sefek, Svevek, seven. To be at sixes and sevens and the expiration based on the vastly ancient occult lore deriving from a time when confusion reigned at the period of change to be treated here. The reader is referred by, or sorry, referred to General Mazzi's chapter in quote time, unquote, the natural genesis volume two section <laughs> 12, the earliest calculations of time separated in the revolutions of the serpent Draco or knew it and around the dog star had it which we know all of these characters from our Thelema episodes. The star of Sophiths is in actual fact the name of the number seven. The number Svek. Or I'll do this all day. Whenever I hear Venus, I say, Venus, rocket number nine, who at a later epoch of time was the planetary representative of the original stellar concepts. Therefore, the seven rayed star of Babylon is a glyph of the spirit of Sothis. It is a star of Isis, Sothis. The mother and, quote, the child, unquote, the beast or dragon of revelations was the seven headed, the manifestor or the light of spirits was neither the sun nor the moon, but the light that illuminates the city. Skeet, skeet, skeet. There is another more magical interpolation of the six and seven, which is concealed in their union. The number apart from its lunar implications is also in reverse. Uh, it indicates the key of the formula of magic, especially characteristic of the beast of the woman, the beast and the woman to be sought the stars magically speaking represents astral consciousness uh, concentrated in the subtle essence the kalas it have been described by the Indian secrets of the tantras 
the vaginal vibrations in the Book of the Law. Iowas disclose this identity and concentrates uh, the formula of Shai Hatan in these mysterious words. Behold, it is revealed by Iowas, the minister of Har Par Karat, which is Harpocrates. We have discovered. On the Abercast, we discovered this on the Abercast. The ancient god Harpocrates is Hur Parakat. This kebabs in Kua and the Kuwa in the kebabs. This is all from Liber two or three, which we've done at length. Go back and listen, bros. When the kebabs behold my light shed over you. Kebabs is an ish Egyptian word meaning star. And the ku is a female essence or magical power. The star represents the magical power over the female genitor, generative essence for the dog star Sothis which is also called the soul of Isis by worshiping this star. Shiatin's light is invoked. These verses comprise the entire formula of sex magic in the mode of its use. Again, according to the ancient magic lore, the formula of the incarnation of God was that of the uh, beast conjoined with the woman. Here we go. Again, according to its mad, this ancient magical lore <laughs> the formula of incarnation of a god was that of the beast conjoined with the woman just hang on till the end there's going to be a ba a giant payoff for this with this beast conjoined with the woman thing for all you fucking degenerates in this comment, the vision and the voice, Crowley observes that, quote, all mythologies contain the mystery of the woman and the beast and the heart of the cult. Notably, certain tribes of the Tyria uh, at this day send the women annually into the, judge, to the jungle, and half monkeys are the result or worshipped in their temples the sexual act can be raised from the level of an animal uh, act by hu man humanizing uh, the influence of the mother which transmutating to the animal fire produces a child transcending both the bestial and the human qualities of its parents the Baga Ma, I'm sorry, the Baga Ah Muatar, 1910, Crowley says, quote, The Sphinx is the deification of the bestial and therefore the apt hieroglyph of the Greek work, unquote. The beast is the embodiment of the Logos. Symbolically and actually incarnates his word each time as a sacramental act of the sexual congress incurs. Each time love is made under will. Will is the whole of the law. This is the sacrament for which Christians abhor as the supreme blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because they c cannot admit the operation of the formula of the beast conjoined with the woman as a necessary condemnation of the production of divinity. 
this formula reaches back to the remote antiquity and interpreted its own plane as the sublime alchemical allegory. So let's talk about this for a second, bros, because this alchemy that they're talking about, this alchemy that Kenneth Grant and Crowley are talking about, it's talking about like uh, the beat, like beast, bestial, not like, so you got to think of it like it's not actual bestial is on a psychological level it's like this dude trying like trying to get off he's like just jamming it in he's like trying to work it and the woman is uh the transitory agent she's the we talk about this in the tarot card episodes she like um she she's temperance She's pouring the cups on the water and on the land. It's like the, the, it's the alchemical, uh, allegory writ large. Actually, it's writ small. This is it writ small. Ah, okay. Uh, going back to the deal. The root idea is that any form of procreation other than normal is likely to uh, produce results of a magical character. Either the father or the child should be a symbol of the sun or the mother a symbol of the moon. The same... In the same writing, Crowley mentions that the worship of the Apis bull in certain labyrinthian in a certain labyrinth in Crete the worship derived from Egypt the bull was white at the feast of the vernal equinox 12 virgins were sacrificed to it 12 being the symbolic number of the houses through which the sun passes during the annual cycle in each case, the bull used the virgins after the manner of the legendary pacifate. The ceremony was performed with the intention of obtaining a minotaur, an incarceration of the sun, a messiah, a variation of the sacrifice involved in the immolation of the bull. Of, Virgin was placed in the hot carcass of the violated by the high priest. She finally choked on the bull's blood during orgasm. So let's talk about <clears throat> Pacifay for a second. We go to www. Theroy.com and we get like a picture of her story. This is not her whole story. This is just a picture of it. She was an immortal daughter of the sun god Helios. And like her siblings, she was a skilled practitioner of witchcraft. Pasiphae was an early Cretan moon goddess, similar to the classic Selene. Both her uh, Tyrene lover and her Minotaur son, who was also named Asterios, which means a star, it's a, it's a big star, uh, were associated with the constellation of Taurus, which I'm sure you've already seen coming. Pasiphae, uh, was there and a God came down and implanted desire in her, uh, the most skilled, he planted a desire in her. He planted a perverse, he planted a desire in her that she want, that she loved up this bull. It's so weird. 
and you're like, what's the, like, nowadays, that's easy. Like, nowadays, you're like, oh, there's, like, furries, and, like, genders don't mean anything, and, like, uh, you know, whatever, you want to fuck a bull. But back in the day, like, this was a shocking thing. Like, uh, these gods came down, and they were like, look, this bitch is going to be in love with this bull. And it drove her nuts. Like, she went through all these things. Uh, so she went to, uh, the most skilled of carpenters and he told her, uh, she told him of the unspeakable sickness that she had and she made him swear a binding oath and ordered her to build, uh, a wooden cow so that she might, um, sit in it. She might sit in this body So that the mighty bull hiding from her husband, Minos. So Minos tried to, was trying to kill this bull. So there's just a whole story about it. All right. So me, um, Minos aspired to the throne of uh, Crete. It, uh, he was rebuffed and he um, claimed, however, that he received the sovereignty from the gods. And to prove it, he said that whatever he prayed would come about. So while sacrificing to Poseidon, he prayed that a bull would appear from the depths of the sea and that promised um, to sacrifice it upon its appearance. And Poseidon did send him this splendid bull, but Minos received uh, the rule, but he did not, uh, he sent the bull to his herds and he sacrificed another one. So he sacrificed, it's trading places. He fo- <laughs> he, it's trading places. He sacrificed the wrong bull. Poseidon was angry that the bull was not sacrificed. And in turn, uh, he turned it wild. He also devised this thing that Pasiphae, uh would develop a lust for this bull. And in her passion for this bull, she took on her accomplice, this architect named uh, Daedalus. He uh, built a wooden cow on wheels. He skinned a real cow and sewed uh, the contraption onto the skin. And then after placing Pasiphae inside, he set it in the meadow where the bull normally grazed. The bull came up and he fucked her in this weird bull trap, in this weird cow trap that this guy had built. So fucking weird. This whole thing is fucking weird. The bull came up at hand intercourse with her and as if she was a real cow and Pasiphone gave birth to Astaros, the Minotaur. Uh he had the face of a bull, but was otherwise human. Minotos um Minos following certain ocular instructions kept him confined it, and underguarded in a labyrinth. This labyrinth. Oh, so we all know about the labyrinth and all that. I just got tied up in this whole beast. <laughs> I got all wrapped up. Into it. But here's why. I mean, here's why. Because it's an, it's an important part of sexuality, right? The formula of the beast conjoined with the woman relates to the 11th key of of the tarot. This key is entitled lust. So this is a change that Crowley did. I try, I was going to try to prime you guys for this change earlier, but I missed my mark. So here you go. He changed justice to lust when he did his set of cards. Okay. So, Let's see if we can get this thing back together again. <clears throat> the key is entitled 
lust. It shows a scarlet woman, Babylon, straddling the beast this uh, with the seven heads described in Revelations. The sacred letter Teth, which is ten, meaning a serpent, is attributed to this key. Its number is nine. Lust is especially important to the cult of Thelema. It is related to the twelfth key, which exhibits the stell of revealing. The stell is a talisman of great power in Crowley, Crowley's system. It shows the goddess Nuit arced over the solar phallic fire. Spirit, the letter of Abraxas, or Abrahadabra, the word of the eon, which Iowas is currently the expression. Shin is the letter of Shai Hatan, or Set, the fire of desire. Hadit, the heart of banner. Nuit, the combination of these two. 20 and 11, therefore, unites Shin and Teth. The gray echo Coptic Kabbalah. These are fused into one letter, which equates to the Kether. Remember the terror. Remember the Kabbalah episodes, bros. The first emanation of the magic light. Babylon, the beast conjoined as in the 11th key and act in reverse to the formula of the 20th key which is entitled The Last Judgment in the Traditional Tarot Pact. Now, however, as revised in the accordance with the teaching of the new Aeon, the key has been renamed the Aeon. I have been your great beast, the John Towers, and this has been the Abercast. Hey, bros, don't forget the American Sermon is starting on March 3rd. Um, it's a the limited series that we're going to be looking at the occult foundation of the United States. There will be an early episode up before that, like an episode zero, at least one of them, just so I can get the RSS feed and stuff straightened out. So if you're hawk eyed and you're looking for it, they give you something to look for. Um, uh, let's uh, not forget to go to abercast.com, the feature topic links. You can, they're all broke down, nice and easy there, searchable, so you can find the shit that you like. Also, social media links are down at the bottom. Let me know what you think about tonight's show. Um, there's also a mailing list for bonus content. This month, uh, the download is a fun Lesser Key of Solomon worksheet. It is, it is pretty fun. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> so, uh, five star reviews, guys. Five star reviews. Don't leave me some bullshit review telling me to edit my show just find something else to listen to 